Slower is faster. Learn it right the first time so that you don't have to unlearn it to relearn it. All of us in here are faced with time constraints, and because of this, our practice sessions often turn into note cramming sessions where we walk into the practice room and try to learn as many notes as we can in a shorter period of time or play through our recital pieces up to tempo over and over. So our practice sessions are spent performing instead of practicing. This has been proven to be detrimental to the overall performance in recital situations. This type of practicing actually ingrains mistakes and impedes, slows the memorization process. How many people do this? Just walk into the practice room and play. Come on, I know, I know you do. All of us do it. It's only natural because we want the piece to sound the, the way it did the first time we heard it. We, everybody wants to sound good. But beyond that, we want everybody else to hear us sounding good through the practice room door, right? So you're kind of showing off. But the key is, when you walk in the practice room, to leave your ego at the door. Forget about what everybody else thinks. It's called a practice room for a reason, not a performance room. If you always sound good in the practice room, you're not practicing the right things. So why is just running it not a good idea? The reason for this is simple. What happens when you get a little bit nervous? Your heart rate goes up a little bit, your hands start to sweat a little bit, your muscles get tight, and at that moment, it doesn't feel like the practice room anymore. It doesn't feel the same thing. And your muscle memory is the very first thing to go when you're on stage. I'm not saying that run-throughs aren't important, but the purpose of this session is to introduce some different practice strategies to avoid relying solely on muscle memory. So, I talk about this with my students all the time. Practicing at painfully slow tempos forces you to concentrate on every note as well as focusing on technical problems, body positioning, posture, sound quality, and musical gestures. Things that you can't focus on when you practice up to tempo because everything goes by way too fast. You cannot possibly think of all of those things. You have to slow it down so that you can think about it and get a lot of slow repetitions so then it becomes second nature when you start to speed it up. On this slide, we're, gonna, we're looking at isolation, 10 stages of torture, which is also called the penny game, hourglass, color coding. So hourglass and co color coding are kind of the same thing. Uh, they go in the same category and in five minutes a day. And so what I'm gonna do is talk about a, a passage of one of my pieces called Palmetto Moon. So what I'm gonna do is identify the passage that needs the attention and then I'm gonna identify the problem areas within the passage. And then I'm gonna develop exercises to help overcome the problem. So, I'm gonna start at 70, which is about half tempo. And this is the eighth note. A lot of discrepancy can happen within the quarter note. So if I just have the quarter note, a lot can happen rhythmically that is not good. So that's why I'm gonna put the eighth note on to help keep me honest. So here's the whole passage. That's four bars. So, obviously this is not the hard part. So I have to identify what the problem area is. It's in this second bar. Right there, and right there. Now it's not that I can't play it, it's that I can't play it as loudly as I want to play it right now. So, I have to develop a, a technique that I can use five minutes every day. See the five minutes on the slide? I'm gonna incorporate this exercise into my daily routine, and I'm gonna do it five minutes every day. The reason I'm gonna do it five minutes every day is because we learn by spaced repetition. Spaced repetition. Spaced repetition. If I do it 35 minutes on Monday and don't do it again until the next Monday, 
I'm going to forget what I did on Monday. Okay, so I'm going to do it every day, and I'm going to get 35 minutes. So here's my exercise. Relax. Tension. Relax. So what I'm doing is you can hear that I'm playing louder and putting tension on my muscles. I'm stressing my muscles so that I can develop some strength for this passage. So obviously I'm not ready to go up in tempo yet because I'm still missing some things. So that brings us to the 10 stages of torture. And what this is, it's called the penny game. And you have a stack of 10 pennies on this side. Let's say I've got two stacks, of, I've got a stack of pennies over here. And every time I play this, every time I play this passage right, I can take a penny and move it over here. Wrong. Okay, so that's one. I got it right one time, I can move it. I've got to get it right 10 times in a row before I can move the metronome up. And I can only move the metronome from 70 to 74. So this is 74. Let's say I did that 10 times in a row. Now I can only move it up to 78. So I'm going to play it in context first. Here's another common, here's a, a very common practice fault that I hear over uh, downstairs a lot. Let's see this. Let's say we're doing this again. Wrong. 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 Ah. Okay, I got it right. I can move on. So I played it wrong five times in a row and then I played it right once, and then I move on. How many people do that? Yeah. So let's say you play it wrong nine times in a row. You get it right on the 10th time, and you move on without ingraining the fact that you did it right. You've given yourself 10% chance of getting it right. 10% chance. Is that what you want in your lessons? Is that what you want when you're on stage? You've got to ingrain it the right way. Here are some other strategies. Okay, so talking about prioritizing your practice sessions, this is where the hourglass thing comes in. Um, when learning a new piece, the very first thing that I do is read the entire piece. I go as slowly as I need to go to gain an overall knowledge of the form and the trouble spots. Then I can break the piece down and prioritize my practice session. So what I do is color code my piece. Red sections are sections that I cannot play at all. They're going to give me the most trouble. So I need to practice those every single day. Yellow sections are spots that aren't quite as difficult, but I still have to hit them every day. Don't have to spend as much time on them, but I still have to hit them every day. Green is something that I can already play. I can already play that. I don't have to spend any time on that, except when I put it into context, OK? So you don't have to use colors. You can use numbers. You can use letters, whatever you want to use. But the whole point is, from your whole practice, when you start the piece, it looks like an hourglass. You're going from the general to the specific back to the general. OK, now, next slide, please. Here are some other considerations. Make sure you are taking breaks for both your mental health and your physical health. Record yourself. Yes, an iPhone is, is good. An iPhone is fine. Use an iPhone. Because you might see some things that you didn't know were happening. And you might sound better than you think. Or something you thought was going well might need some improvement. So record yourself. Can what you have learned in your other music classes help in the practice room? Of course. Why do you think you take theory, oral skills, and history? 
Analyzing your music can give you an insight into how it should be performed and aid in the memorization process. What is the historical context of the piece you're working on? What are the composer's tendencies? All of these things are important, and these things can help you make more educated musical decisions as well as make you a more well-rounded musician.